Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced and welcome to the fourth video in this hands-on intro to Iceberg uh, video series. In this video, we're going to be seeing sort of like one, part, some of the partitioning coolness that exists within Apache Iceberg. So two things. One is the ability to um, evolve your partition. So you're going to see here, we'll run an alter partition statement that doesn't require us to immediately rewrite our table. Um, essentially what happens is that if we alter the partitioning scheme of our table, it will just use that as how it partitions data going forward. But there are procedures like the rewrite data procedures that will allow us to rewrite the data if we want. So if we want the existing data to be rewritten in the new partitioning scheme, we can go rewrite the data and it'll apply that new partitioning scheme. Um, and then we'll show you like the, the partitioning transform. So which will allow you to kind of partition data in really clever ways without having to create all sorts of extra fields. So with that, let's, create a new, so I'm going to head back into the notebooks folder, create a new notebook. Okay, there we go. This one's going to be called lesson three. Okay, so we'll do as we've done before. We're going to go grab our code from that lesson code folder. Okay, so again, in that lesson code folder, you're going to go ahead over to lesson three. Okay, grab that code. Again, not minus the back ticks. Okay, and we'll just Go over here and go over it. Now, what we don't want is these last two. Cut those out for now. We'll add those after. Okay. So let's walk through what we got. So again, it's just a normal setup. So this is just the normal configuration of Spark. Here, we're creating another copy of the table. Okay. Um, just because we've already manipulated the existing copies. Okay. So we can start with a new fresh one. So I'm copy making that 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 copy of the table from the SQL view again. Okay. And you'll notice that when we created this time, it's slightly different. So notice we're partitioning it. So we're going to partition it by the country of origin code. So that way, what's going to do, it's going to say, okay, we're going to write basically all the people who are from France are going to be in one data file. All the people from the US are going to be in a different data file, which generally, if that's how your query patterns go, if you're querying by country, this is going to speed up those queries because you're not scanning all the other files because you don't have them all jumbled together. Okay, which is what would naturally happen. We'll just write them based on how you have them listed. Now, a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing this is that you the partition by statement has to come after the using iceberg clause. If you put it before, you will get an error. Okay, the other thing to keep in mind is that when you're using your select query here, you do need to sort the data. Okay, so basically, however you plan on writing the data. So in this case, I'm writing it by country of origin code, I need to then sort the data. So that way, if not, it'll throw you an error saying, hey, it's expected that you pre sorted the data before we write it in this partitioned way. Okay, so keep that in mind. So then we will now run the job. Okay, and again, this is gonna be running to a table called OF open or DF open 2023 lesson three. Okay, it's gonna be, be doing all our normal spark stuff. So it'll just take a moment to, to do the job. Okay. Because again, it's using my laptop's compute, not a full-on Spark cluster. Um, which again, generally, like you're doing this for when you're, which is to your benefit when you're when you're processing like terabytes and petabytes of data, uh, to be able to break up that job across multiple machines. Okay. So we're getting there, getting there. So it's getting through all the the processing. Do 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 do. Okay, almost there, and it's done. Okay, so now let's head over to Minio. So I have Minio open a separate tab. We go to our object browser. If I click in here in the warehouse bucket where we're seeing everything, see there's our lesson three table. I'm gonna click on that. And if you click on the data files, you'll notice something different. Instead of just a bunch of parquet files, now notice there's all these subdirectories. These are the partitions. Okay, so you see now, look, there's a folder for each country code. Okay, so folder for each country code. And in there, there's going to be like a single parquet file, just because the number of records, it's fine to write to a single parquet file. They're not so big. Okay, great. And so now when if I have a query that says, hey, you know, find me whoever from the US, it's only going to scan that one parquet file instead of all the other parquet files. And you'll be able to figure that out pretty quickly. So that's going to really improve the performance of my queries. But let's say later on, you know, my data gets bigger and a lot of my queries are starting to look for players with a similar like first name, like maybe, hey, all the people who start with A, all the people who start with B, 
I may want to alter my partitioning. And that's where we're going to add back those, those last two lines. So I'm going to add back those last two queries. So what we're going to do is we're going to alter, this statement is going to alter our partitioning. So see, I'm going to alter table and I'm going to add a partition field. And we're going to use, see, I'm using this truncate function. So instead of me creating a separate field that is just the first letter of the first name and then partitioning based on that, I don't have to. I can say, hey, I want to partition based on the truncated value of the first name, truncating it down to one character. Okay. And I, I'm not replacing my partitioning scheme. I'm adding to it. So any additional data I add forward will be using this new partitioning scheme. But, but if I want to update the data I had previously and say, hey, you know what, I would like to kind of go update that previous data. And so that way it's using the, um, that additional partition field, I can then use this call procedure. So basically all these call procedures in, in, in the Spark libraries for Iceberg, they always start with the word call. And what you're doing is you're calling it on your catalog. So it's always like the name of your catalog dot system, then dot that procedure. There's several of them in Spark. So click here in the documentation, they're under procedures. You see, you have all these procedures to help roll back the individual table or to manipulate the state of your existing table. You have here these things for like rewriting, cleanup, um, expiring snapshots. And then you have all these other call procedures for like migration purposes. So there's a lot of different procedures you can use. Again, these are all specific to Spark and Iceberg. Um, some of these procedures you'll see again when we go to Dremio and Dremio has a version of them um, there. So we will come back to that. Okay, but the idea is that they all have the same syntax. It's always like call, then it's going to be like that, that procedure name, and then you can just pass in arguments either uh, in order or by name. Okay, but if we go back to our code here, you can see here I'm going to use this rewrite data files procedure, and I'm just passing in one argument. That's going to be the name of the table I want to rewrite. If I do that, it's going to rewrite the entire table. Okay, but let's say I only want to rewrite like a, a single a partition, like, you know, I don't want to rewrite every partition. Okay, what you can do is you can, if we go to rewrite data files here, you can actually specify a specific, uh, a specific uh, partition. Okay, so you can sit here and say, um, well, you can specify like if you want to sort, but here you can say, hey, like where ID name equals, so let's say we only want to rewrite the US. Okay, so what I can do is I can change this statement, because if not, this is going to take a long time to write it because uh, I just did a test run. So that would be, and again, the first argument would be table. Okay, so that was going back, referring to the documentation. Okay, so that'd be table, and that'd be the table name. And then we can pass the where clause. Okay, so let me go back over here. So I want to say table. Okay, and then we're going to hit a comma. And it's going to be where... I'm going to say... Um, Oh yeah, country of origin code equals uh, US. Okay, and then there we would use double quotes, but I'm already in double quotes, so we're gonna have to escape them. Okay, so we'll just do uh, US. Okay, so my country of origin code equals US, and that should do the job. Hopefully that the escaping of those quotation marks doesn't cause an issue, but the idea is there is only gonna rewrite that one partition instead of rewriting every partition. Because maybe that partition is just extra big and I just wanna kinda make that one a little bit more, just rewrite that one alone. So we'll go over here, start this, and let's see it go. Okay. Okay, in this case I didn't rewrite anything that I have the right field. So let me take a look at the data. I might have put in the wrong value. So if I go back to the data, let me take a look at where it says US. Let's take a look here for where the US code is. United States, yes, US. Maybe I misspelled country of origin code. Country of origin code. Okay, but let's see here. Let's do it without. Okay, so save us a moment. Okay, df open less 23, and let's just rerun that again. This will take a second. So if I run that, it's going to rewrite every file. Oh, that time I didn't want to. Cannot duplicate partition field, no truncate ref, first name. And we're going to clicks. Okay, let me take a look at Minio. Maybe you already made some changes that I'm unaware of. 
So I go to my data. I'm going to go to the US one, see did it make any changes in there. Uh, US. Well, it's going to be towards the bottom, isn't it? US. No, I didn't make any changes yet. So I am going to go back over here and just change it to my original code. OK, which just said the name of the table. OK. And then we're going to run that. Oh, because it's because I already ran the statement. That's why. OK, so we're going to comment that out for a moment. I'm going to run this. And there it goes. It's starting to rewrite this whole table. This is going to take a while because I've done this once before. So this does take a bit. So I'm going to pause the video. Um, so if you want to go grab a coffee while it does this, um, I will see you on the other side. Okay, so when it's done, this is what you're going to see. So you see it like it rewrote 181 files. So it, ad it added this many files because, again, uh, it's creating a, a partition for each country code for each first letter of the first name. So, again, you want to think through sort of what is the right partitioning for you. This is just an example. Okay, this is going to probably lead us to what's called the small files problem, where you have too many small files with too few records. That's slow down queries, uh, because for this size data set, that's probably too granular position of partitioning. But just again to demonstrate how you can update the partitioning. So now, if I go back to the data folder, I still have all my folders for each country code. But if I click on any particular country code, okay, and I see there's the original data file that had all the records in it. But now there's a sub partition for each like first letter. So basically there's people who have a first letter of A, first letter of their first name of F. And notice it's doing it by the letter, but it's not saving an extra field. Like that's the cool thing about Apache Iceberg. In those parquet files, there isn't an extra field that is like the first letter of the first name. It's just transforming that field and only tracking that within the metadata. So the metadata actually has those transformed, transformed values to track that. So, um, but yeah, you can rewrite your partitioning. I didn't have to rewrite it. Like I could have just allowed it to the old data to stay partitioned by country code. And then any new data would have been by country code and that first letter of the first name. And again, using that truncate function, there's also bucketing functions where you can spread the data in arbitrary buckets, uh, time transforms for like month, day, year. So there's a lot of really cool transform functions that make it really easy to take advantage of partitioning in Apache Iceberg. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you all in the next video.